Near Yellowstone National Park, residents of a small community where a colored park wolf was shot by a local resident say visitors don't understand their community. MCN's John Shear reports that the incident left locals worried about its effect on the tourism industry. We're very close to the end of the road here in Cook City, just outside the remote northeastern corner of Yellowstone National Park. The road ends just down here a couple of blocks. In the winter, snowmobilers and a few winter wildlife watchers from the park are what business people here depend upon. I feel when people don't have the correct information, it's bad for business. I cater to a lot of the wildlife groups in the summer and winter and they are a big chunk of my business. Gertner is talking about the social media buzz over the shooting of a wolf near Cook City by a local resident. The wolf was killed legally by a hunter with a tag, but it immediately sparked a buzz that it had been baited. And it's a lot of supposition, it's a lot of gossip and rumor, and it's made it challenging. Knowing the facts, dealing with the facts, is the best way to kind of squash that. We went in and investigated that and, and, and it wasn't uh, wasn't true. Uh, we haven't uh, found any evidence that people are baiting wolves. No. But a lot of the growing number of wildlife tourists don't seem to know that. There is a lot of people that come in this area that that think all of us locals are, are against the wolves and it's not, it's, it's not the case, it's not true. Johnson is a hunting guide. But he also has a robust business guiding wolf and other wildlife watchers. Tourism is vital in our community because so many people have come and they come here because they want to see wolves. And when they come here and they see them, they, you know, they get excited and they want to know more. Even though you have a small percentage of hunters in this area, it's not doesn't represent the majority of Cook City folks. Gertner is also quick to defend the rights of hunters to legally harvest game including wolves, but she and others don't like the idea of killing a collared wolf. Many of the wolves that have been um, taken legally in the hunt um, have been collared wolves. And when you lose that, um, you're losing a tremendous amount of data. But making the big animals, like wolves and bears, a part of your business plan also means making adjustments to your lifestyle. If you live in Gardner, if you live in Cook City, I mean, I have a, I have a dog, a small dog, and I, I typically step outside, especially at night, if I have to let him out. So my life has changed because I have a dog, and when I am back on the Bannock Trail now, knowing that the wolves are using that kind of as their pathway between here and the park, um, I keep my dog on a lead. But for most, those compromises are worth the payoff. People look at us and say, do you know how lucky you are to live here? And I say, oh yes, I do. While wolves can be a threat to ranching businesses, they can be a boon to other businesses. A recent University of Montana study says that wolf watchers bring in more than $35 million to communities around Yellowstone. In the park, in the Lamar Valley, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks officials say while they encourage people living near the park to take every precaution possible, if predators get too comfortable around people, safety becomes a top priority. That means some of the predators could be killed to protect their human neighbors.